Hello, Miss Violet Chachki. Welcome to episode one of the Unholy and Curious podcast. You're my first guest, which is really exciting for me because I never thought in a million years that I would ever be hosting a podcast of my own um, and that I would have the world famous legendary the legendary 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 Violet Tchotchkey legendary legendary Violet Tchotchkey um Thank you so much for having me. I am honored to be, I'm honored and humbled and just so happy oh. to be your first guest, hon. Yes, You're, I'm so excited. I mean, we talk a lot about a lot of things. We have tea to spill. There's tea to all spill. Day, every day, Discussions, arguments, dick pics to rate. I mean, there's yes. many things to go over. There are a lot of things to go over. <laughs> so, um... Let's get right into it. What was it like growing up being the biggest homo in Georgia? Oh, my God. I mean, I actually, I think I really always knew I was, like, kind of special. Like, it made me feel really special, actually. <laughs> what kind of special are we talking like about? Like, I a mean, we know, we know you're special. No, I mean, like, very special. No, I remember, like, very, very vividly, I was peeing at the urinal at my Catholic school. Just, like, peeing at the urinal, like, no big deal. I look up on the wall... And written on the wall, it says Dardo is a fag, which is my last name, my legal last name. Your legal last name. And uh, my Christian last name. And I remember being like, oh, my God, people are talking about me. Like, people are obsessed with me. So I feel like they sort of carried on into, like, my adult life. Yeah. And I also thank God that you um, are such a mess because it's honestly like a blessing that the world has entertainers like you because I honestly, when I think of what drag means in this era, I can't think of it without you. Um, you've really like carved out a space for yourself in this industry and not just in this industry, but also in fashion. And I think it's just really spectacular that like you're out here doing your thing and you've created this entire aesthetic that is totally yours. Um, it's not totally mine. I, mean, I like pull you, from you, a you, lot you of You borrowed things. bits and pieces. I borrow a lot from a lot of people, mm -hmm. but I, I like recontextualize it and definitely like put my own spin on it for sure. Yeah. But I mean, you, you as well, you've like made a space for yourself like as like a trans supermodel, like a legitimate trans supermodel, like in the real deal Thank fashion you. industry. You know what I mean? Aww. So we both are like, you know, iconic, I guess. <laughs> I, I, iconic, iconic um, homos. Trailblazing. Tra trailblazing queens. Trailblazing um, LGBTQIA plus. Uh, exactly. Divas. Don't forget the plus. The plus. Very important. <laughs> Nobody's left out in, in our pride flag. The uh, mm -mm. alphabet army. The, uh, the alphabet <laughs> army. As exactly. They, here to stay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we're iconic. I mean, get with it. I will never forget the video of you, like, someone stole your beret or something. I don't know who, I guess it was a prank, like, in France when you were living in Paris. No, that was in Milan. That was in Milan. And I was walking down the street during Fashion Week, and I had just bought um, this Prada Newsboy cap. And honestly, thank God Prada brought back the Newsboy cap, because honestly, like, when I think of that style of hat, I always think of, like cringy creepy Leonardo DiCaprio like walking around in really? public wearing those newsboy caps but for whatever reason Prada managed to make that chic I think of like the early 2000s when you would wear like a newsy cap and like jeans under like a dress to like a red carpet or I think of Anne Hathaway and Devil Wears Prada which is uh, so your vibe I am very I'm I'm very Andy Sachs you're giving going through Andrea a very, Sachs a very strong Andy Sachs fantasy at the moment especially when I cut my bangs and dyed my hair yeah. brown so I'm like really trying to serve that look um but I was walking down the street in Milan during fashion week like on my way to a show and this guy randomly like walked up behind me on a segue <laughs> like he was on like a segue <laughs> okay <laughs> first red flag first red, first red flag he was on a segue <laughs> and so he was walking um on this uh, walking excuse me he was rolling he on was the segue and he rolling. he came up behind me and snatched my hat off my damn head and so i said 
of course. Give but you me ran, that, no, you ran that, after him. <laughs> give me that hat back. It's, it's Prada. Prada. <laughs> and I got the, I got the hat back and it also was probably like one of my most viral moments. So I mean, it's iconic. Great, great publicity. It's so good. There's, it's that scene from White Chicks where I think a guy tries to steal her purse and she's like, and of course it's like a dude in, dressed up as a white chick or whatever. And she like runs after him and literally beats him up and is like, it's Prada. It's literally the exact same energy. Like we should play the they're like cinematic parallels. I know exactly. There is definitely a cinematic parallel there considering I'm also a tranny. <laughs> so, um, okay. I did not even consider that aspect no, of that, it. See, but there, there are multiple parallels. There are layers, honey. It's, it's like an very, onion. Uh, highly layered. Um, <laughs> Do you have like a specific viral moment? Like, do I mean, obviously the viral moment that I think of when I think of you is um, the moment where you you do the turn in RuPaul's Drag Race and you take off the dress. But like in all fairness, yeah. I actually have not seen a full um, You're season one of, those of RuPaul people. Dra- RuPaul's Drag Race. Like I'm a fan of you like in person, but I have not watched your season. I mean, but part I have of me, seen that. I have seen that. Everyone's like, yeah. seen that. People think I've that's a woman. Like, they're like, oh, what runway is this? And they're like, they think it's a fucking model. I'm like, that's a man. First of all, that's a man, Maury. That's me. Um, people, everyone's seen that gif. It's like crossed over into like the straight world. It's it like, if, hey, like, I'm happy I got to cross over, but it was some shitty were, little... Were you inspired by Hussein Shalayan? That, remember, like, that Shalayan show where they, like, rip off, like, they all look like I they're wearing a I think mine was before like, that. No. No. Way. That was, like, that's vintage, vintage, that, vintage. That's vintage, vintage. There's huh? new ones where they're ripping shit off and people, whatever. Anyways, no, I was inspired by, oh, my God, what's his name? You revived the gimmick. I revived the gimmick. The original concept for that look was an Alexander Vautier knockoff. Like it was, I basically ripped off a Vautier jumpsuit. We love Alexander Vautier. I wish he loved me. I'm like, bitch, invite me to your show. Give me some shoes. Like I needed some Vautier boots. I, I walked that show several times and I've always been like too scared to ask for a piece. And then finally I was like, Alex, can um I have a dress? It's so weird to ask people for favors like me. that. But I actually he love seems like it. he loves you. That green look that you modeled was like the Everywhere. best look in and the was, show, and it was worn by like every like Eva Green wore it. It in was Khan. iconic. Like there, like it was. It yeah, it was iconic. And it was and boots or was it leggings? It was um, it was like. I guess they're called like a stirrup boots or something. You know uh-huh. where it's like pants. It's and it has like, like a, a little man- strap. It, no, it's like um. They're they're like pantyhose with high heels attached. Oh, it's like built in, yeah, like the Balenciaga, like high waisted leggings that have the heels built in. Yes, it was a full fantasy. It was a full moment. That was like a good runway moment. But I, what people don't know about me and you is that we know each other from doing a fashion show together. Yes, well, that's what I was saying when you're saying you're not a fan of me necessarily because you see me on Drag Race, like. Part of me like hates that you've never seen Drag Race because it's an amazing show. But part of me loves that I sort of people can know who I am without like knowing that I'm from Drag Race. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I can exist in the fashion world and meet people who have no idea like how I got where I am. Um, so it's like it's nice. It is nice. We met at a Moschino show. Yeah, and I actually watched your Met Gala YouTube video in preparation for um, me being in drag as you. Um, because I wanted to sort of like, you know, get a flavor of what your little Met Gala moment was. Mm, so I watched mm-hmm. that. And that actually, that dress from your Met Gala. Was in the show that we walked. In the yeah. sh- was in the show that we walked. So that was like the first time I met you. And then we just sort of kind of started running into each other at various different, like, you know. Functions, functions outings. events, outings. Doing, um, doing the most everywhere we went. Um, and then. New York. I feel like I remember us being partying in new york i think it was maybe pride weekend i can't remember we were oh, we at had some lady fag party we were no we were at someone's wasted. after party like someone's i remember parties first of all remember, remember, remember after going party. To remember parties. fashion week remember new york uh but in a way i don't miss it part of me likes the change like it's definitely been nice to like i've been really owning my like masculinity which is yeah. so strange for me like i've always been so focused. but you look hot like when you're out of drag like as a guy i've been like working on it more. yeah i've been like owning i've been like living in that space more like i've been I exist in multitudes obviously but i've been living like just because i don't i'm not working like i'm i mean this is the first time i got in drag in like a month it feels like um so it's been nice to just take a break and like yeah. like exist in different ways and like 
buy a house plant and like try to cook a meal and like do normal uh, uh, people's bu- stuff. Buying your weird apartment shit on your yeah. Facebook marketplace. Oh my God. I'm obsessed with this Facebook marketplace. Uh, uh, could you explain a little bit about like what, what go into depth with Facebook marketplace and how you're finding all of these like random items? Because like you found like a mannequin lamp, you found, found you so found like a bunch shit. of <laughs> Facebook well, marketplace at- is giving. It's giving everything. Facebook marketplace is giving. It's giving full show full interior design home and garden Ar- architectural digest like it's giving the full fantasy I just I just was bored I think in quarantine and was like I'm just gonna read you my house I think and was just finding I mean it's just fun to look I don't know I think I just like deals and I yeah. like vintage stuff and- who doesn't like a steal like that's like me I I refuse to buy designer clothes now full price I just go into stores and then like I just look around and I'm like, mm, that's going to be really great in six months when it's on the real, real. T. Yeah. You're very that girl. I'm very, I'm very thrifty with my designer clothes nowadays because well, honestly, it's a pretty penny to buy things full price and it always ends up on the, on the well, real, real. Well, it's always weird to think about like seasons. Like this is definitely a conversation that's happening in the fashion industry right now about like every single season, resort, couture, ready to wear, men's, like so many seasons come out and it's like. Who's wearing these clothes? Who's wearing these clothes and who's keeping up with it? And it's like, it feels, part of me in my head is like, oh my God, I'm wearing last season right now. Like, oh my God, I'm wearing, this is from two years ago. Like it's out of season, da, 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 da. But like, who the fuck cares really? And like, I think it's cooler to appreciate clothing like beyond just like that season. And you've talked about this with me before, especially with like the really trendy like fashion blogger type of looks. They'll like take something and ruin it. Ugh, and then fashion like, bloggers ruin everything. Yeah. It'll be like one really iconic moment from like Prada or whatever. Yeah, and exactly. they just like run it into the ground. I, I cannot I cannot buy Prada anymore. And not just because not just because I don't I don't like the new creative team very much. I'm I I have my opinions and I'm not afraid to say. I that. have my I opinion. I have I've my opinion. Got something to say about I've, it? Exactly. But that being said, it's like the the products that they launch are always really good. You know, like they yeah. have they have like good products. Well, and that's stuff. the one brand that people I think people actually wear those clothes. They do wear those like, clothes. The problem is, is that like. You know that flame shoe that they redid? I loved that collection. I loved the 2012. That. Collection. Yeah, I love the 2012 collection yeah. so much. And then like when they brought back the that that flame shoe, mm-hmm. I was like, oh yes, like okay, it's I'm gonna back. it's back, and I'm <gasps> like, and now I can like actually buy the shoe and like enjoy it and wear mm-hmm. it. And then goddamn motherfucking Kendall Jenner has to buy the shoe, and, then and like and and now every, once it's on a Kardashian, it's ruined for me. Once but it's particularly well, once it's on Kendall, a Kardashian, then. They start producing the knockoffs immediately. Like, yeah. as soon as one of those people wears it, then they start producing the knockoffs, and then it completely gets oversaturated and watered down. And you have people like drag queens are walk- walking around wearing <laughs> the, Zara the, Santi- the Zara version yeah. of the Prada sandal that was so iconic and amazing, which is a reissue from 2012, yeah. all because someone who was really famous, like a uh, Kardashian or whatever, Ch- Chiara, Ferrari, whatever <laughs> her name was. Um, yeah. One time I was at a Prada show and she was filming. How do you say her name? Chiara Ferrari for Fer- Ferrari. Don't ask me. Whatever. I know who you're talking the about. The really though. famous Italian and influencer. She, and she's like, she's married to like this um, famous Italian rapper. I guess like Italian rap is a huge deal in Italy. So like they, they're like this very bizarre like power, power couple. Uh, uh, yeah. Power couple. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> that's where it's like. She, she, you know, she wears the looks and he tattoos his face and raps saw, in Italian and it's a whole damn vibe. Well, Italians are I so it. passionate about everything. So, like, it's it's wild that someone can be, like, wildly famous in other countries. But, like, she's not that well known here. No, but they're she's, just, like, she's not, like, a household like, name Even here. in, like, Brazil, like, they just... If you're Brazilian, they just, like, fucking love you in Brazil. If you're Italian, they love you. Like, they, like, really, really support their own. But anyways, I was at a Prada show and she was there filming, I guess, like a vlog Mm -hmm. and her camera, she had a whole team. Like I'm talking like I film, I vlog sometimes when I go to shows and do fat. Like you've seen some of my vlogs on YouTube or whatever. They're very, it's like me and one person with like a camera and like, it's like just it. Yeah. This bitch had two booms, two cameramen, like, (laughs) like running around and the cameraman with the boom literally ran the boom into my head. 
and was like, how Sorry. dare they? And I, and like, I have a fucking wig on and I'm like, if this bitch would have knocked my wig off, it, you would have really had something to film then. Yeah. Yeah. He literally his ass. ran a boom into my head and I was like, wow, this is not the fantasy. Exactly. Like when, when I had my hat snatched, it was like, give me that back. It's Prada. And like with you, it's like, give me that back. It's <laughs> that's virgin, my hair. That's version Remy. Remy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my human unit. That's like- <laughs> That's my human unit. That's my good human unit, you little I'm, bitch. Speaking of which, <laughs> I'm actually wearing your hu- your human unit right my now because unit. I followed your um all of your tutorials and this is my botched violet tchotchke it looks good. fantasy. I tried, but the only thing is, is I don't have a glue stick to like glue down my eyebrows. But the eyebrows are good. You're giving me like a bit Susie Sue with the eyebrows. With the shape, the eye shape is good. Like it's giving. Yeah. Like it's I, giving I, glam. I, I, I like I tried my best and I really feel like I'm I'm trying to deliver you the delivered. violet tchotchke fantasy. I've seen um, some tutorials where people try to do my makeup and it's like <laughs> I'm like offended. I'm like, you uh, think this is no. like, you think you're giving me like, you no. think this is how I look. No. They're really, it's, it's wild. Like I, I, it would be so rude of me to do like reaction videos of me reacting to people trying to create my look. Cause I would just be mortified the whole time and they'd probably feel horrible, but it would be really entertaining. I think, I think you should do that. <laughs> and I think you should read them. You know I, what I mean? I, I mean, it's cute. Everyone, whatever. Everyone's just having fun. These, it's just these makeup. makeup, these makeup influencers need to be humbled. They need a slice. They need a slice of humble pie. Like I am tired of seeing Jeffrey Star videos where he's like, "You love her." I love. You're I obsessed lo- with her. I love Jeffrey Star, but Jeffrey Star. I like. I love to love Jeffrey Star, and I love to hate Jeffrey Star yeah, at the same you time. You love the cringe moments. I-, I-, I love the cringe moments where it's like he's like my my ugh, like the taste level of Jeffrey Star is so corny and tacky and hype beast and like the most like um yeah in no. the most cringe upsetting way well it's just like a neon get ready in my rolls royce louis vuitton like do you remember that song that he had i used to love his song called louis vuitton it was so funny i know the one that's like fuck me i'm a celebrity <laughs> can't no. take your eyes off me he put out a song called louis vuitton when mark jacobs was that loop was the crib director yeah. and he's like give me the louis it's all about the Louis, <laughs> Louis Vuitton. It's what I want. I want to get my shopping on. I feel so sexy. Don't don't when read Louis too many of my to- to don't read too many of the lyrics because I'm scared that we're gonna ha- they're gonna like license it or claim it if no, we say too many lyrics. Uh, if th- this might regenerate the boost in the Spotify streams for Louis Vuitton by Jeffree Star because it's an iconically cringe song. Like iconically good, iconically bad, like just so Well, Jeffree Star is like an iconically cringe person. Yeah. Like I'm so grateful that he exists because Love. honestly the drama there it, it's just a constant gener- generation of drama that he's like constantly putting out and I think that's I think that's awesome for me as a spectator <laughs> of YouTube drama I'm always incredibly satisfied to see um all of the fights that are going on and between between up. him and Tati Westbrook and James Charles and like Manny MUA, where are you? I don't I know. I can't keep up Rest with everyone. Rest in peace, Manny MUA. I don't know. Like, well, I never thought I was like a fan. Like a lot of these people. No, I, like, you're obsessed. I'm, oh, you're let, obsessed. Let me be obsessed. <laughs> let me be obsessed. I think it's mm, mm. Uh, alcohol, alcohol break. break. <laughs> You know, when you start talking about the, the when we got when you start talking Star. about when we got on Jeffree Star, we, we needed a sip of the cocktail. <laughs> um, yeah, I honestly think that it's. Um, I find it very interesting that people want makeup advice from these people. I don't even think it's you that. Know? I don't even think. It's, I think people just want to feel like they have a friend or like they are part of someone's life. They're part of something that's bigger than themselves. And like, for instance, whenever I take like selfie videos, like I'll, I'll promote something like whatever, whether it's my calendar or like whatever I'm promoting a show, mm-hmm. I can post a flyer. Like no one gives, gives a fuck about a flyer. But if you're talking to the camera, like selfie mode, like people are so much more responsive to that. Like they feel like you're talking directly to them. When, yeah. like, like sweetheart. I'm talking to my fucking iPhone. Like you just happen <laughs> to be watching it on the other oh, end. Yeah. Like I'm not talking yeah. to you, but people... It's like a mental thing. They feel like, oh, I know this person. They're talking to me. I'm supporting them. I'm helping them grow. Like we have this connection, this like relationship. Yeah. 
that's a, a, a just just saying right now to anybody listening to this it's cute that you feel that way but i'm not but your fucking friend <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes if you're cute we can be friends yeah a lot of Honestly, guys have if, been if, sliding if into the dms you're, yeah if you're attractive and you're hung then by all means like then we can be chill and friends and whatever but like <laughs> would you say you're a size queen yeah. Okay, me too. We should own that. We. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I know it's body. Sh- people are saying now it that it's body shaming. It is not body shaming. I don't care. Men have been objectifying. Like I. I did. Listen. We are allowed to object. Literally, the dick is an object. The like, dick is. We yes, are it allowed is. to objectify a phallus. Also, I'm like one of those people too, who's like a guy will be DMing me, and I'll be like okay whatever he's like all right looking like whatever but then he'll send me a dick and i like won't respond but then he'll send me a dick pic and if the dick is giving i'll be like oh hey what's up how's it going (laughs) bonsoir like a a, a good penis will change my mind about it well it's not even a good penis it's also the way the photo is taken if you are giving artistic nudes then i'm totally here for it you have to like Give me a little light and shadow. Give me a little fantasy. I don't want to see like messy shit in the background. I feel like maybe straight dudes aren't thinking about the curation of nudes as much as gay dudes They should are. be. They should be. They should be. I feel like you probably get some really nasty ones. Um, The the worst is when the dick is like a, an amazing dick, but then... Um, it's attached to a loser. I don't care if it's attached to a loser <laughs> because honestly, like with the lights off, like it's it's fine. It's just a dick, yeah. you know. But I mean, um, what I'm more um, focused on, I guess, is like the background of the dick pic. And yeah. I know that they talk about Me this too. in Euphoria. Like this is brought up. They have like a dick pic like episode. Really? I haven't. S- I watched I one know. episode of Euphoria. I was like, bitch, I've already seen Skins. Like I don't need to <laughs> rewatch. A bunch of teenagers being fucked no, up. No, don't. It's better. Don't say that. You like Euphoria? No, uh, oh don't. My God, shut up. Yeah, you've. No, it's not like Skins at all. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I like you. I do like Euphoria, honestly. And I, th- but, um, maybe I'm like a traitor to my own kind because I. Well, you're really, a bit I, younger than me I too. Feel, I feel like Jules should be my favorite character, and honestly, I love Hunter. Is she Schaefer trans? So much. Is she the trans? Yeah, character? Hunter Schaefer. She's gorgeous. I've like worked with her before. She's stunning. Has like the nicest personality. Like, um, she's like the most beautiful, like stunning. But, stunning. Um, stunning. But do you know who really um. Turn the party. Turn, turn the party up at, on Euphoria. It's Alexa Demi who plays kind of like the ditzy, vapid, um, we love a ditzy popular, vapid. ditzy, vapid, popular high school girl. I feel like we play that role. Yeah, bit. exactly. I, That's I, like, I identify, I, very, I, I yeah. identify, like I watch that show for like Alexa Demi's moments and mm-hmm. she has the most iconic moments on the show. And um, for that reason, like I'm a fan of Euphoria. I'm a fan of like it's a good I don't show. Like the ma- it's a good I haven't, show. I've only seen one episode, but even just the makeup. I'm sorry, no, sweetie, <laughs> darling, no. What are your thoughts? Because I feel like people Honestly, are like, oh my god, Euphoria makeup. You're doing Euphoria. Ma-. I'm like, no, bitch. I've been doing glamour makeup. I've been <laughs> doing Pat McGrath. I've been doing glitter. Like just because some fucking show about drunk people or whatever drugs people like put glitter on <laughs> their face, up like bitch, they did not invent glitter. Like y'all need to calm down. Um, yeah, they did not invent glitter, but I must say the revival of gr- glitter is completely based on Euphoria. I must no. say. An, excuse me. Uh, Coachella people, would like a word. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Coachella's definitely played a role, but I will say that like now, bitches are uh, the, it's it's they like they, they love the chunky glitter under the eyes. Like that's, that's like a, horrible. To that's me. a euphoria thing. That no. like the chunky glitter under I the hate. eyes. Hate. You know who was doing that? You don't watch Drag Race, but. The guest judge on Canada's Drag Race, Jeffrey Blair Chapman, I think he has the same makeup artist who was doing Euphoria, and they literally just did Euphoria makeup on him, and it looked like he just had shit all over his face, like the whole season. Oh, and no. he was like, he got a lot of flack, actually. If you're listening to this, Jeffrey Blair Chapman, I'm coming for you. <laughs> um, he got a lot of flack. <laughs> I don't know who was, this is. He's like, he was an asshole judge on Drag Race. Like, he was body oh, he shaming was, he was like He was like the... Um, the like, Simon Cowell of Drag yeah, Race. Yeah, he was trying to be Simon Cowell of Drag Race, but like Simon Cowell is like a music producer. Like this guy has like been in one movie. You know what I mean? Like you don't really have the chops to be like that critical. I, I, there's nothing I love more than somebody who has like no credentials in anything and is giving being, critiques. The, being the harshest critic. Yeah, like I'm there's like, nothing more satisfying than somebody who like somebody who knows nothing about nothing having like a million opinions and also having a platform. Like why are we giving this person who has zero experience doing this like? A platform to speak on 
this subject? Like, um, what are we doing? Well, that's me in every subject. Like, I have so many opinions. I'm like, True. I'm so involved in my politics. I'm not a goddamn politician. I'm not like a political pundit. I'm just paying attention. <sighs> I feel and like I have I have things to say. The problem this I, year, I feel like I've been fo- not forced, but it's like it's impossible to not be political. You know what I mean? Like, I, it is impossible not to be political. I, n- you know what? I'm like, you know, I'm a sissy. Like, I like. Makeup and hair you're and a femme, glamour. You're a femme sissy queen. I'm a femme sissy butch bottom like queen. Yeah. To work slay mama. But like. Same. You know, my interests include interior design, real estate, like green smoothies, makeup, beauty, fashion, high heels, like yeah. bondage. Politics is not on my agenda, but like I have been f- made to become political. Like. It yeah. has been such an intense year and I'm like, it's, I hate that the system is so messed up right now that like people who don't have any interest in being political, like have to be, but I guess that's the point. Yeah. I'm really glad that Biden, who is like, seems to be the most boring man on earth is now our president. So we can go back to not giving a fuck. Oh my God. Did because you see that I'm GQ like exhausted cover? Of giving a fuck. Was he on the cover of GQ? They did like a fake cover. Like, I guess it was like a, tr- I was so confused. They did a body double and photoshopped Biden's face on the GQ cover, but they have him doing the most cringy British GQ, the most cringy shit, like influence. Like he's basically an influencer, but the president. And it was a, it's a, like a mockumentary style thing. Like they were like, I guess they were sort of commentating on how Trump and like even the Vogue cover with Kamala got like a lot of flack, which we should definitely talk about. Yes, honestly, they did her. Di- the Vogue did her dirty. No, they did not. I disagree. Our first disagreement on the show. Our first disagreement on our show. Oh, we're fighting. Um, the girls are fighting. The girls are fighting. Um, no, I, okay. I'm. So, I, okay. okay well, you, I don't. I don't care. Okay, listen. I don't care what the goddamn backstory is. What what happened was Converse had a deal with Kamala Harris to release the shoe. They wanted the shoe. The shoe like Converse sponsored this Vogue cover. Did they really? I mean, allegedly. I'm saying this alleged. I'm saying allegedly because I would not like to. Have These it. are not facts. These. Are, <laughs> I don't know if this is fake news, but fake but, news. Uh, fake news. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. So you think sister. that Kamala was in bed with Converse? Dude, she like did a shoot. This woman is running for vice president, and she then she got elected, them. and then she did like a a collaboration with Converse. Like, girl, like we are in the middle of a pandemic. Like, you don't, you have nothing better to do with your time I other don't than know like. No, if I believe screw, that, I believe. I know, I know people on the inside. I, I also sleep with people at Converse. <laughs> I have. Um, I get my uh, high tops for free. I wish. Um, Converse is from Boston, which is where I'm from. So holla at Converse. Like, honestly, I'm, I, I wear Converse on a daily basis. So I'm not, I'm not like knocking Converse whatsoever. Like, let's be clear about that. What I'm saying though, is like, I, what I, what I understand to be true is a lot of these covers are sponsored. So like, it's like an advertiser cover. So like people, the, the publication gets paid by the brand to have their clothes on the cover of the publication. Well, that's how magazines so, are making money. I mean, no I one's feel really like the magazines. reason why that particular photo was chosen for the print issue was because she was wearing these Converse in the photo, and they were sponsored, and it was a collaboration between her and Converse. I I'm know, allegedly, girl. allegedly. I, don't know if I what I heard, what I understand. I don't know if I believe that, but I I will entertain like the possibility of that being a thing because that's very possible. I, I'm excuse me, I'm sorry, but why does Gigi Hadid have a nicer a Vogue cover? I, I, first of all, I, 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 let's not even get into that. Um, she, she was she's very sweet actually. She, so she, Gigi fine. Hadid is very very sweet. I just have and she's gotten a better walk. I so. have I have um what I would like to call Bella fatigue. You're burnt out on Bella. I am burnt out on. <gasps> I am burnt out on all of these girls. Like, and honestly, I'm a model and I know it's not my place to have an opinion on these things, but like, <sighs> I miss the Lindsay Wixton. Uh, well, I miss yes, the Agnes I, Diaz. I know. I miss like, I miss models that like were interesting to look Just, at. Like, weird and it's looking, not, it's yeah. not that Bella and Gigi and Kendall aren't interesting to look at. They're not interesting to look at. Oh my God. But, They're, I enjoy looking at Bella and, I, I, I know it's artifice. And I know there's a lot of artifice going on there, but that's what I do as well. So I can appreciate the artifice. Yeah, I've also had two rhinoplasties. So yeah. in that way, I identify with Bella Hadid. You know, I, I I've like, had my Botox and yeah, filler. I've had my, I've we, had my Botox brow lift. Do our zhuzhes, but I would, I don't know. 
I, I miss the Lindsay Wixtons of the world. We work with Lindsay Wixton. Yeah, we do. I love I love Lindsay, Lindsay Wixton. She I love how normal she is outside of modeling. I haven't like oh, okay. Well, listen, like I haven't like really hung out with her outside of modeling because I closed GCDS and she like. Oh, I opened GCDS and she was closing it. So I came up to her and I had just signed with the, and we're with the same agency. So I was like, oh, hi, Lindsay. Like, I just like, I just signed with the same agency as you. Like, how's it going? Like, I live in Los Angeles. Like, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, hi. She kind of poo pooed me, which is okay, fine. Okay, but you poo pooed me at first. But she, she followed me. <laughs> she followed me on Instagram and then unfollowed me. Oh, damn. Yeah. So I'll let, maybe well, me and I, Lindsay have beef now. Beef. Me, we're starting beef. Me and beef. Lindsay, this we're, is, we're, we're, we're the model beef podcast. The model beef podcast. <laughs> um, um, but I think she's just like when we were. I was on set with her for that GCDS campaign um, with fucking Sophia Loren. By oh the my god, way, the, the Barella, the Barella bitch, campaign. That was a gagaruni. Um, they were so like. Excuse me, while I hit this jewel, not sponsored. Where's my fucking jewel? So not cool. So not cool. Um, yeah, she was just like super normal on set, like. She was just like a normal girl. I don't think she like pays too much attention to the fashion world. But she has one of the most iconic faces of all time. That mouth. She really just the pout. Who's the, the teeth, other gap tooth girl? Um, that I love from that same era. It was when the gap tooth um, girls were like making a, a big moment. Georgia Mae Jagger. Yes, I love Georgia Mae Jagger love. too. Gorgeous. Love, and love, I love, 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 love. Is, is love, she Mick Jagger's love. daughter? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent. I would this. You know who else I love? You're nodding yes, so I'm going to assume yes. Okay, okay. so George May Jagger is honestly that's well, the nepotism that actually works. That's for me. a yes. That's <laughs> the one. That's the one that's time the nepotism. One time is nepotism actually for me. came through with yes, the good exactly. with the goods. Um, um, not I honestly, as I sit here with a Kate Moss book on my table, I have. Do we dare go <laughs> there? Do we dare do go we there? Do we dare talk about Kate? I just met her this past year, and she was so sweet. So nice. Wait, Kate Moss or Kate Moss? Okay. Who well, are you talking about? well, Kate. I was talking about her daughter. Oh, no. the one who we didn't I'm, talk about that. I know. I she's like she's bless too, her heart. Bless her heart. She's, bless her heart. Can't walk. Her, I know. Well, I'm heart. not. I'm not even gonna go there because, like, I would love to have Kate as a guest. That being said, um, so we'll just cut that part out. Yeah, we'll just cut that part <laughs> out. But fashion, fashion editor, cut, cut that part. Yeah. Um. But right. I honestly think like the nepotism in the fashion industry is so rampant these days in like the really the most tacky way. Like why are why are so many of these children of supermodels who do not look like their parents? I'm sorry, you can say whatever the fuck you want. No, I mean they but do, but it's just not the same. No, it's just not. It's not the same. It's it's just it's not, not. It's the not same, the same. Babe, like, it is really is not. not and honestly, like you you know that like. All of these editors need to do favors for these former supermodels because that's why their kids are being put on. Like, it's not because they have incredibly inspiring faces or because their look is like a one in a million look. You know what I mean? No, of it's, course it's not. Because, it's well, because it's because it's a nice she, anecdote. It's a nice like storyline. It's a nice like legacy like I, I understand the like the legacy of being of legacy. hot because your mom is hot <laughs> shut the, the legacy of being up. gorgeous and beautiful and rich no it's not it's not for me it's for me that's how i got where i am just by being born yep you know what model i love maria carla boscano mm -hmm. like, I like those maria are the models carla, like for me her look is so unique and interesting and like beautiful and just seeing her like age and so she's beautiful been doing and it great forever. forever she really ever. has been like literally like that girl has walked so many catwalks i'm surprised her legs aren't stubs now she's like i've seen pictures of her on go -sees when she was literally looks like she's 12 years old and she just has the most interesting face i am so impressed by models in the fashion industry who um have been able to keep up that sort of who have been able to um, continue to model into their late adulthood? Because honestly, um, I'm I'm twenty I'm twenty six and I'm washed up as hell. You know what I mean? Like I just like I'm. It's I, it's, it's it's not sustainable. Like it, it's, it's not. It's the same thing with me with drag. Like it's just not a sustainable career, and we are not naive enough to think that it's going to last forever no and, and also we're too opinionated and we have like a voice and we also are controversial fig like you're so much less controversial than me like everybody loves to hate me nobody hates you uh, 
Well, you'd be surprised. Yeah, where I'm People getting, I'm def- getting I mean, canceled like every single day. I'm doing something wrong. I'm anorexic. I'm racist because I posted the wrong photo on Instagram. Like whatever. Like there's, you know what I mean? It's just, it's hard to maintain like a clean image nowadays. But someone honestly, tried to come for me yesterday for the most ridiculous. Ridiculous thing. Well, you're telling me somebody tried to come for me yesterday for the most ridiculous thing. I'm like, you guys need to get off the. Com- you guys need to go back to work. Like, we need to yeah. open up. The back- <laughs> we need to open everything back up. Yes. These people are on their phones way too much. Yes, get these hoes back to work because these people are going nuts. And and they're obsessing over. They're like. The problem is people are searching for meaning, they're looking and for they're it. like, they're, yes, they're looking to be mad about things that. Uh, they're looking for a deeper meaning in things that do not exist. They're looking to be well, they're angry putting value in places. on things that I don't put value on. They're like this person, Marilyn Manson got canceled obviously for rape allegations, whatever, which is yeah. like, that's a whole separate conversation. But yeah, so I follow him, right. Or I follow, mm-hmm. I followed him for years, but I don't, I follow 3000 people. Yeah. I'm not like constantly thinking like keeping a mental log of who I follow. Someone commented and was like, I can't believe you're still supporting Marilyn Manson. Da, 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 da. I'm like, bitch, you think I'm like re- like glued to Twitter seeing who gets canceled today and they run yeah. into my running to my Instagram to make sure I unfollow them immediately? Like yeah. you guys are fucking nuts. Like this me following someone does not hold any meaning for me. And it as it shouldn't, because honestly, here's the deal is like you can I I get irritated when people cannot separate the artist from the art that they've created. Like Marilyn Manson. This is a slippery slope. This uh, this is okay. Yes, I understand. This is a slippery slope. And sometimes and sometimes I will say that, um, for example, with Michael Jackson, like he clearly was a pedophile. And that is uh, people who are in denial of that are people who are obsessed with the art and obsessed with like the legacy of Michael. And I understand like it's hard. I understand not wanting to not wanting to let your heroes go down in history as sort of like these terrible fucked up people. That being said, I do believe the allegations. I I mean, I tried to watch that documentary. I did. I never watched it. I I just like, I just, I just know, like I I couldn't get through it. It was so hard to watch at some point. I was just like, I'm good. I think like, I don't need to see more. But I understand, I understand that like people could do fucked up things. Like I love Caravaggio paintings and Caravaggio, um, murdered somebody. For example, I mean, like, I mean, uh, I like Dolce are... and Gabbana in the 90s, but like they're so weird and problematic. I mean, they, it, but that, that's that a whole being, other conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that being said, that being said, they, they may be problematic as people, but they're but their uh, the clothes art are that, still yes, cute but, in the 90s. Like. Yeah, exactly. Like the art that they created is still meaningful. And so, like, I think you should be able to separate the artist from the art. And so I to a can, certain I, degree, yes. to a certain degree, for sure. And I so I really value and I appreciate um, artists who have created incredible work. That being said, artists are complicated, fucked up people. And I kind of like it that way, because honestly, I think like incredible art is born from like the most fucked up parts parts of um humanity well i think i think life and i mean this is gonna be very meta right now but i think it takes all kinds like you almost have to have people like moments that are truly fucked up and truly bizarre and uncomfortable and wild in order to have beautiful moments in order to have creation and art and and it's it's all a big puzzle and every piece has to be there for yeah it to like work so it's almost like you can't really have it's just part of it like it's a piece that has to exist uh, for the whole thing to like function. So, I mean, that's a very like meta, like we are one way of looking at it, but yeah, I mean, totally. But that being said, I think it's, I think it's important to understand that you can, you can love the work of art without loving the person who made the art because the, the art is on its own, not an, it might be an extension of that person's identity, but it is not them. I, I do agree with this. You know, like but there is a line. Like for instance, this past drag race, I just did a review show. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but I like, basically, I didn't, but explain. I like reviewed this drag race episode and I was basically coming for the girls and just being very like honest and harsh and critical and, and taking drag very seriously as I always do. And there's one contestant on the new season who, taking drag very seriously as you should as, I sh- as it yeah. deserves as, as it, it deserves ch- holds it's a sacred art form uh, the um, sacred art of the drag sacred the sanctity of femininity um 
there's this one queen named Elliot with two T's and that's how she says it. And, um, there was the challenge was you had to take bags and you had to make something out of the, they can make an outfit out of bags. So she took bean bags and made like a gorgeous outfit. And it was like really impressive. Like it was a gorgeous outfit, but like her as a queen, I'm like, mm, probably not my cup of tea. Like definitely not my style. And like, I would definitely normally be very critical of her, but the work that she did, like, I just have to respect it. So yeah. that's like a, that's a really recent example of like, yeah, I, I, I can do that. I can separate someone from their work and appreciate the work and not necessarily appreciate the person and vice versa. I have lots of friends that I don't like their work. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think you're a good artist, babe, but you're a great person. Uh, yeah. Well, same. <laughs> I mean, and boys too. That happens with boys too. I'm like, you're not um, really talented. Actually. Oh, I honestly, like if I don't respect somebody's art, I can't date them. Really? No. I can get past it. I, I, it depends on I can how get pa- I can get past it for a layer or two, but I cannot the, get past for the it for the duke. But I cannot get past it like for like long term. Oh my god, the amount of like, especially when I was living in New York City, like the amount of like artists mm-hmm. that um, I'm like I'm I'm like you're not an artist, you're just unemployed, boo, boo boo, boo boo. Like I oh, you, I know you think you're a creative genius, but really you are just a hot boy who picked up a paintbrush. Well, it's there's another layer of this where it's like or rich. a camera. They're all photo- the camera. They're all the photographers. photographers. There's a bunch. There's this new wave of celebrities that all of a sudden just like they're like not really actors, not really singers, not really influencers, and all of a sudden they pick up a camera. It's like the go-to thing to do when you run out of things to do. You're like, oh, I think I'll become a photographer. I even went through a phase like that. I went through a phase where I was like, I mean, well, I take I, pictures, but I, yeah, I went to, but the, the, I went to art school and studied darkroom photography for four years. That being said, I remember DM, like there was a time in my career when a lot of shit was going down. A lot of dark shit in my modeling career was happening. And I was like, really like, Oh my God, this is like the end of me. Like I'm never going to work I'm again. Over. And so I, I DM'd Inez and Venude and I was like, what camera do you guys use? I think I'm going to become a photographer. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this because I'm going to become successful enough as a photographer to spite all of these people who have oh like, Oh my God, you were doing it out of spite. I was totally, I, I was doing it out of spite, but the petty Betty. Yeah. I'm, I'm pet. I'm fucking petty. And I, this is, I'm petty. I'm mean. I'm a bitch. And we this, have that in common. Yeah, we have that in common. That's why I respect you. <laughs> and, I, and and I don't care. Like, I honestly, genuinely, I don't care if people think I'm mean. But that being said, like, I sort of, like, picked up, like, I picked up, I bought this camera, the same camera that Inez and Venude use. It's, like, a $5,000 camera. Yeah, I literally, literally, like, not did not take a single photo, did not do a single photo shoot. I still have that camera sitting in there. We I'm, could I'm, shoot. I'm, we, we, could, we, could, we could do it. We could re- uh, recontextualize your photography yeah like who knows maybe i have a a, a future as a a slutty fashion photographer uh, well there we are in need for some because everyone keeps getting canceled every people do get keep get, getting canceled that being said there are some some of these photographers really deserve to be canceled i i honestly think like at the end of the day like if you're showing up to a shoot it's work and if you're going to like try to you know touch somebody inappropriately at work If you're going to, you know, if you're going to try to coerce somebody to do something that they're uncomfortable with or something highly sexual, it's modeling, maybe glamorous work, but it is still work. And I have been on set with a million creepy photographers who have done a million creepy things to me. And I've only spoken out about like a few of the most creepy incidents that Mm -hmm. I've had. That being said, like there, there is, there is room and space for cancellation when it counts, but people getting canceled over like dumb shit is stupid like oh here a great example of this is like the army hammer thing that's going on right now like do you know who Ar- army hammer is oh, okay we Explain. won't get, we won't get into this but i mean <laughs> we i'll get slightly into it so army hammer is sort of like this he sort of he's this actor and um he's really handsome did you see um what's the name of that like can somebody like recall the name of that show that army hammer is on where he plays like the abusive husband of nicole kinman was it a Netflix show? Are you thinking of um, You're thinking about Alexander Skarsgård? Yeah, Big, Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies. Okay, so. Oh, that's Alexander Skarsgård. Alexander Skarsgård? <laughs> oh, whatever. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, but, in, um, Call Me By Your Name. And oh, yeah. 
Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. He played. Okay, so the he the, plays the older guy, the, the old yeah, the older guy in Call Me by Me. He's like a good. He's a good actor. Like, mm-hmm. and honestly, he looks good on screen, and he plays like you know. He kind of plays like a, a daddy figure well. And he's always typecast as sort of like this abusive, hot older man who's taking care of like a dam who's taking advantage of a damsel in distress or like whatever. And so apparently he was like texting some girls and like he's into some really kinky shit. And he was like, you know, you didn't hear about this. He was like a cannibal. He was like, oh, into, he had like did, a cannibal fetish or something. This. And so he, he, he got, eat the, the girls. yeah. And he just got dropped by his, um, label or whatever. He mm-hmm. just got dropped by his, um, management, management. their agency. Yeah, exactly. His agency over these like texts. I mean, there maybe if he got dropped, there's something more there that we don't, we don't know, know of. Yeah. So that I'm not like going to go into it. That being said, like all these girls who are claiming that like, oh my God, it's so abusive that he like, you know, wanted to like w- women love that shit. Like, let's be like real about this. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I've never met a girl in my life who doesn't want to be choked out. And like, you know, girls like. I mean, I like uh, it. Yes, I like it too. <laughs> I can't and, speak for every girl. Yeah, like honestly, like I want to be. I don't know. I mean. I, I want Army Hammer to like I have a similar, nibble, nibble on my thighs. Well, that's just the thing. Everyone is different. And if it, something makes you uncomfortable, then you need to say something and whatever. At, like, at some point, you're an adult and you have to be like, hey, listen, like I, I draw the line here. Yeah. And like, or just not talk to that person anymore. But like. Like, if you're going to continue to talk to somebody and then, like, honestly, it just, what it seems like to me, not to, like, honestly, I'm not, I don't know the full extent of the story, but, yeah. like, what from what I've researched, what it seems to me is sort of, like, these girls um, wanted a, like, kind of relationship with Army Hammer and he uh, didn't really want a, a relationship with them outside of fulfilling his kinks and you know um cannibalistic sexual fantasies and um cannibalism is a whole i mean we are really, but is, I mean, yes but is if you're texting if you're texting thing, somebody though. like i want to bite you and drink your blood like is that really like abuse or is that just like you're you're weird and kinky but that's, the, that's the thing is you don't yeah. know you don't know well, what I, if, if, he, this guy if he was is a real cannibal and is killing people and eating them like what if what if it turns into that then, what then it's a problem but if it's just like kinky like i like biting people uh, like and yeah like i, I want to suck like, your blood and baby whatever, you want to like drink someone's blood when they get a cut like okay haha like you're a vampire like kinky but like it there's a very very thin line between like he, he's like the heir to kink the, and like abuse he's like the heir to the arm and hammer fortune too which is like very interesting to me because i don't you find that it's like always like privileged people who have the most fucked up problems i think when I, when I I don't mean like pr- I don't mean like privilege like ch- like your white privilege I mean like privilege like you were born into like money. so much money that yeah. you never have to work again in your life well, like which is like a, so many people in are Los born Angeles. into lots of money and have their lives really really easy sort of look for the chaos um because they don't really have that like you know what I mean if you're fucking struggling like you don't need to have a chaotic sex life. You need to have like a normal sex life. If yeah. You, if you like, but if you're like, if you have real problems, like you are not like trying, you're trying to, to fulfill be comforted your, at night. yeah, like, exactly. Like you want to, you just want to be like, like me, like I'm like one of those girls that wants to be like snuggled and kissed and like whatever. And I like, you know, once in a while I like, you know, I'm, I like it rough or whatever, but for the most part, I we're sort talking of, about, just, we're talking about cannibalism and like crazy, crazy kinky shit. But I don't know. Was he For even really... politicians, I think it's a repressed Ugh. thing. Like the gay politician the stereotype. Gay, the, I, lo- I love. I love a gay politician. Shout out to Lindsey Graham. Um, I have a lot of friends. Who um, alleged, go. alleged. I'm just saying. I don't want to be sued. Allegedly, Lindsey Graham might these be a These are homo. not facts. We the, have to do a disclaimer. Yeah. These. <laughs> these, these are not facts. The opinions expressed on this podcast are just opinions. Just opinions. <laughs> In my ASMR voice. I love. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's the same with that. It's like some, there's something about being repressed and just wanting the opposite. And I think it's the same for me. Like in my day-to-day life, I'm very dominant and I know, I know what I want. I'm very aggressive. I am like a go-getter. Like I usually get what I want. Yeah. Like creative. You've, like I, I do you're what a bo- I want. You're a boss. I'm a boss bitch in the yeah. day-to-day. So like sexually i'm like kind of the opposite of that so well, i kind of same. like it like balances out a bit you yeah know I mean? exactly i i feel like I, i'm the same way i feel like I'm, I'm one of those ceos who like needs to be like 
put in her place. Put, put in, I need to be put, put in my in goddamn your, we're place. Bra- I think we're like the, def- the definition of brats. We are definitely. I, did you take that quiz? Did you take like the kink the, on that the um, no. that online kink quiz? No, bitch. I just oh, know I who took I am. it. I took it, and it came out as brat. So I know I think I'm we're a brat. What they call a brats. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. I don't. I'll like, own that. I'll, yeah, whatever. I'll I want. I want to be. Pride. I want to be choked and slapped around. We and, like, know, bitch. We know. Mm-hmm. I want to be ga- mm-hmm. uh, ga- gagging. 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 Mm-hmm. That being said, I do love. You know, I'm, I like. I want to be choked and gagged and like whatever. But then I also want to be snuggled afterwards. So it's like, aftercare. Aftercare yeah, exactly. is very important. Um, yeah, then you have to text me the next day and be like, I really enjoyed choking you, bitch. Yes, exactly. If you don't text the next day, then what was the point? Yeah, I <laughs> honestly, I always was so cringed when like people would call somebody daddy during sex or like call someone daddy like sexually. I'd be like, what the fuck is no, wrong with you? I love and that. Now, and now as, a, now as an adult, like I want a daddy. I'm like, please, well, it's not please even like, choke me. I think when before daddy. I was into it, I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, I don't think my father, but it's more of like, it's not about father. It's more of like, I just know. like strong, like take care of you d- vibes. A d- I don't know. A daddy is not somebody that you like. Honestly, no. If I, I could never. I can't even date guys who slightly resemble my dad or have like slightly resemble even his personality. Like I'm so not like when you call someone daddy, it has nothing to do with them Absolutely resembling nothing, yeah. their father. It's just sort of like a power thing. It's, it's like a, a power g- thing. It's it's role play really. It I is mean, role you're, play. You're basically creating like a fantasy of like giving them power. Yeah. I mean, giving them that, that space, getting into that mm-hmm. headspace. I have like my Dom moments too. There are yeah. a few boys that I'm like, I could definitely flip for you yeah but that's I can't very see it. rare it definitely de- I, I don't like to I, I mean I feel like I went through a phase especially the phase where I was like traveling so much and doing like so many shows every season and I was on a plane every week where I got to a point where I was just sort of like I, I kind of enjoyed being like the aggressor mm-hmm. in in the bedroom and now I I'm as a pillow princess that's yeah same and now I'm just a power bottom loves it we'd love to see it I've always been a power bottom, but like I'm way so way more now a power bottom. Yeah, no, same. I guess I'm trying to be. I like I said, the quarantine has made me like enjoy like normalcy a bit and enjoy yeah. like just being like me, like a boy, and like owning that space and being a power bottom. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So like I enjoy I enjoy a kinky moment, but. Should we move on to a different new topic? subject? A new subject. Like honestly, we we enjoy being choked and like no, we want to like, call we, men we made daddy. That very clear. And we and, and, we, and we like anyone out there listening. And we, um, yeah, we we're like, both single technically, we're, right? Oh, I, I met that boy. The other yeah, night, I kind of, I kind of have a man now. He's hot. You think he's hot? I think he's hot. Like not just because he's attractive, because like yeah, he's like attractive or whatever. Yeah, like, he he is really gorgeous. like he's technically attractive, which is fine, which is great, whatever. But like he could also just like hang, which I think yeah. is really sexy. That's like, like that's really important for me because I can't have a relationship without friendship. Like he was you like need to be my friend. With us. Like, yeah, it was he, like, he he knows how to he knows how to chill, and he also is like literally such a gentleman. He yeah. opens every door oh, for I me. He you know he he treats me like a queen and like not to be like he treats yes, me queen. like a queen. <laughs> yes, he treats queen. me like a queen like or whatever. But like you know what it's it's kind of this it's is It's a nice change. It's a nice change. God, it's a nice change. Uh, yeah, and honestly I've I've been single for so long and like and I've I, heard about all the boys that you've had sex with and dated and I'm like this one's good. I know all all like 300 of them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I can't keep I'm up, bitch. A, I'm such a stupid whore. I'm we like, love to see it. Yeah, we love to see it. That being <laughs> said, um, yeah, it's it's nice to, it, for me, like the new experiment is to be with a guy who sort of like treats me well and also is hmm. down for a relationship because I sort of like, I think I'm so used to being independent. Like I've gotten into a, I've gotten into a mindset of singleness and I'm trying to change my outlook on relationships because I feel like it's kind of important at this stage in my life as like a 26 year old like I've spent like the past five I've spent the past five years like pretty much single like I've had some like flings here and there and I've done things I've been single for five years too and yeah I think it's time I mean the again I think the quarantine is really affecting 
everyone. I want to snuggle. I want to snuggle. Well, it's like if there was ever a time to like close your bubble in and like have your limited group of friends and like have someone that you see regularly, it'd be now. And uh, yeah, I'm here for that. And I'm here. This guy's he's very sweet and he was cool. And he was not like weird. Like sometimes straight guys are just sort of like they don't know how to hang with the. They don't know how to hang with like L- hang. with people that aren't like other straight guys. And he's yeah. he's so down to just hang with everybody. And honestly, he has like he has no like weird ego complex. Exactly. Or, like, no like masculinity. there was no like toxic masculinity or like internalized yeah. like femme phobia or like any no he's so secure in himself as yeah. he should be because he's just honestly he, and he he's hot, hot and smart yeah. and delivering in many ways so and what and see now we're gonna record all of this and talk all about this amazing random mysterious and, guy and yeah then and it's then not he, gonna work out and then it's not gonna work out but i mean honestly it, like even if it doesn't work out i'm just grateful for like the experience of trying something yeah. new so i think like in that way like and honestly like the way like we both kind of want the same thing with each other so it, i think there's like a potential for it to work but that being, I love it for me too because I sort of like need this right now. Like yeah. that being said, being like being the Samantha Jones <laughs> persona that I, I mean, like that's that's become like a huge part of my I identity. I would say you're definitely the. I'm Miranda, down. I I'm so Samantha. You're definitely Samantha. And I feel like I need to, and I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm sort of entering my Carrie phase. Like you know, this is this is the, this big. Is this Mr. Big? He looks kind of like Mr. Big. He, he kind of has like Mr. Big vibes for sure. He was sure. like wearing a Burberry jacket and like had his hair slicked back. Yeah, he yeah he know okay. he knows he has I he can has, see Mr. He has Big. Some swag. Um, I'm here. Secretly, for we it. are gay. <laughs> S- swag. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, who uh, who knows? I mean, honestly, it's it's interesting though because I'm like the first trans girl that he sort of like. Really? dated and been with but i find that this is the case where like i'm i'm this is uh, fascinating i'm me. i'm always the first trans girl that most got for for guys that i start dating like i'm so used to being like the first like trans girl that guys have been with and I, honestly it's a lot of pressure sometimes but with him like we have such a natural connection that it doesn't feel forced or weird or sort of like, I'm not like, Oh my God, like does he think I look like a man this morning because I'm not wearing like, you know, mascara or something like he okay, just sort of don't be ridiculous. First of all, but, but I have just part of my, dysphoria. part of my, part of my condition is I have dysphoria. So <laughs> part of my condition, part of my no, condition I, of being a tranny I is that. I have dysphoria. And I so. hear that, but you don't need mascara. Okay. Yeah, but you know, but you know and what I'm saying. We love mascara, but we love mascara, but you, but you know what I'm saying. Sort yeah, of, of like course. even in my most raw state, where like I would be so insecure for any guy to see me in that condition. Um, of course, he, it's always going to be like a. It's the reality. I mean, that's the reality for you. Yeah, it's, like, it's just going to be a and thought I, that comes into your head sometimes. Yeah, and I know, I know you're having fun as well. I hear, I hear your oh, has something changed. Did I tell you about this guy? Yeah, you did tell me about this guy. Oh, it kind of did change, actually. Oh, no. I was just infatuated. I mean, honestly, when the dick is giving. The dick was giving. I know. The dick uh, was giving. Girl. I know. When the, di- when the you, dick was. Uh, I was when, when they slam you good. It, slam it makes me good, feel, guy. It makes slam me feel, good, guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it makes you, you know, feel like you're in love. Well, he the first night he came over, he was dressed perfectly, which I it sounds so vapid and vain of me but to me it shows like okay this person took the time to like think about what they're gonna wear and how they're gonna be perceived and how and like i did like that's cared. what i do like yeah. he cares like, he cares. It's like okay this person cares like yeah he's, he came over he like put on like leather shoes like he had nice boots yeah. on and like pants and like whatever and then we like talked had wine had amazing sex he went home then the day after the next day he came back over and this time he was not wearing a nice outfit anymore. And I was like, okay, so we're not caring anymore. Okay, that's fine. We can be casual. And then I was still in fact, we had amazing sex. It was great spent the night. Bomb dick. Like everything yeah. was incredible. Said all the right things, did all the right things, was not worried about who I was, was not worried yeah. about drag, was not femphobic, was not internalized homophobia vibes, was not toxic masculinity. Like yeah. was hot. And then whatever, we met up again in the daytime. I guess we were both well, I was curious. Then I was infatuated. Like yeah. infatuated. I was like, oh my god. But then like, when you hang out with somebody like before five PM. It's different. It's so different. It's different. Mm-hmm. Um 
Well, also for me, like as a famous drag queen in the gay community, it's really, really difficult. Like people have some preconceived notion about who I am. And like I said earlier, like I exist in multitudes. Like I am like a sassy diva, superficial bitch, but I also am like, you know, installing light fixtures in my house and like putting plants and like doing ugly stuff. Facebook like, marketplace. Doing, like, go on Facebook. Like I do, you know what I mean? I exist in like different ways too. So some people yeah. have a preconceived notion about who I am and that definitely comes across when they're meeting me. And then some people do not have internalized homophobia and like cannot bear the thought of being with someone a who cross dresses. A drag queen. Someone who puts oh clothes on and, and makeup. Yeah. Um, and so there's that whole, and they have to like, you but know, also people in like, Los Angeles are so image conscious in the most obnoxious way. Like they can't, that, that like there, people are even people who have no chance of ever being famous in a million years. They like, because of like this fucking town that we live in, Holly weird, Like, Mm -hmm. people are so sort of, like, judgy because they sort of want to be perceived by the public Mm -hmm. or just people as being cool and being, like, normal or whatever, which is such bullshit because, I mean, like, everybody in this town is such a goddamn freak anyway. So, like, I don't understand why you would care so much about dumb shit like that. Well, I think it just shows immaturity. Like, like, that's what I think I was so infatuated with this guy is because – it's been so difficult for me to find someone who just like is mature and is comfortable in their skin and like understands that like people exist in different ways and like this is my job and like this is something that I love creatively and like but it's not necessarily everything that I am it doesn't like consume my entire fucking being and soul and uh and so yeah I think I have it's very rare for me to experience that from a guy and so that's why I think I like was falling for him because yeah. the dick was hard the dick was good he was Ugh. saying doing all the right things he I got know. dressed up and he was like treating me like a normal fucking but person what, what, what was the straw that broke the camel's back well we met during the daytime and it just wasn't as the sexy. vibe yeah the, the vibe, vibe was just, just like, different wasn't as sexy and i don't know is it worth a second like chance I, oh it definitely is like i'm not he's not like i'm not writing him off but yeah. i'm just not infatuated anymore like that that butterfly feeling of like like I would like almost like couldn't sleep. I was like so horny for him, but like excited to see him. And like, I was so just like butterflies excited. Like when you yeah. first like kind of fall for somebody. Have you, have you been in love gone. before? I think I've definitely been infatuated before. I, at the time, I don't I, mean infatuated. I mean like in love at the time I thought I was in love, but looking back, I'm it was infatuation. thinking it was probably more infatuation. Yeah. Being in love for, for me, what being in love with somebody really means is it sort of means like, um, having the ability to be best friends with that person like yeah. be there's like you can be infatuated with somebody but honestly when you're in love with somebody it's because they're your best friend and they're your, your ride or die and they'll take a bullet for you and you'll and you take a bullet for them it's sort of like this mutual exchange of emotions and yeah. um that is so hard to find and especially in a town like uh, like Los Angeles it's like nearly impossible which is why i'm shocked i'm like sort of like in this sort of well, you know knock on wood bitch because i thought i was in love for 3 days and then boop for me, it's it's been more than three days for me. So I mean, like, well, excuse me. I'm just to say. I'm just saying. I think I've been. I'm in love with some of my friends. Like I have that with a couple of my friends. Yeah. Where, where I feel, I feel the love and I feel the support. And I know that they would, they would stick up for me. They would take a bolt. They you know they would, they would be like my ride or die. They would, they see who I am into to, in totality. And yeah. They, they see me as my public persona. They see me as a private persona, and they like actually understand my perspective, where I'm coming from, how I got here, why I am the way I am, all my faults, all my flaws. And like, they see it, they get it. And they still are here through all of that. And I feel like that's love. And I have that in a non-sexual relationship for sure. Yeah. But that, I've uh, never had the two at the same time. It's, sex and that. It's great that you can kind of, people who have close friendships are 
really close loving friendships are less likely to want to settle down in the first place. And I'm pretty sure there's like some scientific study of this. Like I'm not pulling this out of my ass. Like this is like a proven real thing Mm -hmm. that like if you have friends that you feel like you receive that love from, you're like less likely to try to pursue a relationship because you're sort of getting that love. You're getting what you need. That's yeah. Well, that's the thing about gay people though, that it's kind of a double edged sword. Is that the right expression? Anyways. Um, Because if, like I have a lot of gay friends who we have that love that's yeah. non-sexual. And so it's like they're getting their needs met from me in that way. And they're getting their sexual needs met from other people. So it's like they compartmentalize relationships and they separate love and sex completely. Yeah. And it's sort of like it becomes a bit hopeless as far as romance goes because it's like, okay, well, why are you going to pursue romance if you're already getting all of your like – all of your needs All met. All your needs met. But that's why I was single for so long because I have so many like loving relationships with my friends that I sort of felt like, okay, I can get this sort of like emotional love that I need from my friends and then I can get like sexual love from like whatever A random guy from whatever hottie is D- in my in my dms that yeah. like wants to hang out or whatever. That's, that's what it is. So that's yeah. what's going on like all that's what everyone's doing and I'm just sort of like, okay, but like at a certain point, I feel like you have to be like, all right, enough. Like I want both. At least yeah. that's where I'm at. I'm like, okay, compartmentalizing. But I guess you are too. It is what it is. And um, I'm not – whatever. At the end of the day, like we're young and we are – We are we're, young. And we're working hard on ourselves and our careers. True. So it's not like we're in a place where we sort of like are – where we need that type of relationship yet. And I also find it very bizarre when people are consistently in relationships. Like, oh my God, they, like the, they don't, they don't know how to be, be single. single. Yeah. I find that to be like a major turn off. Oh, that is like a psycho. That's like a total red flag for me. Like a lot of my friends that have never been single. I'm like, you don't even know who you are. Like you literally change whoever with, with, with whoever you're dating, you become yeah. like a new version of yourself and you've never been able to just like be still and be alone and be single. And it, it's like a, there's some sort of mental, I, I believe it's like a mental, like you need therapy. Like someone yeah. who does not, cannot be single, like you need to go to therapy, babe. And like, you need to work through whatever, like fears you have of being alone or whatever. Yeah, definitely. On. I agree. Okay. So Miss Violet, now that we've talked about all of our our deep shit. We just went in. I feel we like just we went, just went through sex, love, cancel culture, cannibalism, uh, drag. Drag. Which we went in. That we, was we like did go in. power hour. That was power hour. We also, yeah, we talked about like model nepotism. I mean, I could go into all those subjects for like hours and hours anyway. Yeah, we could break down each one of those subjects into their own hour but podcast. But I, ha- I have some... um specific questions for you Mm -hmm. um and i would like you to answer them in a sort of like rapid fire format i mean like short quick answers first thing that comes to my mind yeah exactly okay on my my little notepad get your little notepad get my little notepad so cute this this segment is called be decisive so question number one who is your favorite trump family member Oh my God, the the one who was at the gay rally. Tif- is it Tiffany? Tiffany Trump? Tiffany. I gag for Tiffany Trump. She's such a dumb bitch. I love, I love it. her. I love her too. I mean, she's like, she reminds me of like the simple life or something. For she's sure. She's so stupid. Just like the way she talks and the way she looks. I'm, I'm like, I can't. It's, it feels like I'm watching a movie. Did you know she just got engaged to like a 23 year old billionaire, like heiress boy? Um, which I find also amazing too. She, I feel like I could key with, I feel, I feel like, like I could she totally would key with Tiffany. Rail some lines, bitch. I feel like she could go in. Yeah, definitely. She seems like a, uh, Tiffany Trump seems like a fun girl. I definitely Tiffany might be my favorite as well. I also gag for Baron. I think Baron Trump. Baron's like. I'm very curious Bar- how he's gonna. Uh, yeah, like, grow up. I am too. I like, I think he's it, gonna be a fag. A moment. <laughs> Maybe I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, exactly. We're we're allowed to say these things, by the way. That's my slur, sweetie. I'm yeah. allowed to say it. Yep, yeah, it's true. Um, I I also personally like I love Ivanka because I love how she sort of talks and like this sort of sexy like robot voice. Oh my god, that's really a good. A sexy 
whisper, like as if she has a dirty secret <laughs> that she is is hiding from the world. You know how she sort of has that really soft, hushed voice. Like I sort of, there's something about Ivanka that I I'm allured by. Well, honestly, all of them have their own sort of disgusting charms. Um, yes, they do have disgusting <laughs> they charms. All have their own sort of weird, disgusting charms. What's her face? Who's the wife? Melania. Melania. I love Melania too. Like, I cannot wait for the divorce. Like I cannot wait for the divorce. The book. I wonder if she will get, to, I wonder, I, my oh question my God, is, yeah. do you think she fell more in love with him? Like through the presidency? Do you think she was sort of like, ew, this is so gross that now my husband's the president. But like the more she sort of like saw her husband, like, no, oh, I Trump think she's take like, on these leadership I roles. cannot believe I got myself into this mess. I wanted a sugar daddy. And here I am having to deal with this fucking, bullshit i don't i'm i'm curious to know if the love that they share is like real love or i don't know I, i'm like honestly no, I'm she, she's you, a, there will Mel- be a book. melania is a dream podcast uh, all tiffany trump ivanka trump and melania trump if you're if you're listening who the fuck cares about christmas <laughs> christmas decorations i was same I, <laughs> who the fuck I, I give like, me a fucking a break, break. <laughs> I, I relate to her in that way oh my god okay next question least favorite makeup trend the, gl- the euphoria glitter absolutely full circle yeah that one's tired i would agree with you on that one i'm yeah. so I'm tired of euphoria makeup okay favorite and least favorite messy celebrity oh god my i mean i think they're all my favorites like honestly for me the golden age of hollywood like the last era before <laughs> smartphones like Lindsay, paris nicole like when tabloids were still a thing like still how we got our news um like those are my favorites for sure like all of them in a car together paris uh britney shaving her head like that yes. whole era of like the fashion was iconic yeah the looks were iconic the flip phones red bull cheetos uggs like i love all of that shit do you have a least favorite though is there somebody who's like too messy for you to like i don't think there's such a thing as too messy I guess I you're right in a is. way. The one messy moment that I really love from a celebrity is when Courtney Love threw her shoe or her compact at Madonna. <laughs> Have you seen that video? <laughs> no. Oh my God. So Madonna's that like, sounds so good though. Madonna's doing an interview at the MTV Movie Awards and she's like sitting down like very serious. Yeah. She's wearing Tom Ford for Gucci uh-huh. and she's doing like a very serious interview and Courtney Love is wasted. Iconic and wasted off her ass. And she is there like up on like a platform and she throws her like makeup compact at Madonna. Yeah. And then like stumbles up to the platform and, and like is just so messy and sloppy. And it's iconic. Ugh, I'm here for it. Also, Anna Nicole Smith's like, want some money? I want him to produce, make me beautiful <laughs> do it rest in peace uh, rest in peace Anna Nicole Smith that Christmas special did you see the Christmas special maybe Howard Howard <laughs> Howard Howard she is definitely I mean that whole era of celebrity uh I love to hate it I do too for sure I, I I'm, I'm in, in agreement how big is the perfect dick the limit does not exist. The limit does not <laughs> exist. I was kidding. There are some... I have seen this one dick on, t- on Twitter that I'm like, that's too big, bitch. It's like long. I prefer like a lovely girth as well as a lovely length. I agree. There needs to be like symmetry between Both. the length and the girth. Yeah. Like there needs to be like a good correlation that I like think, suits the dick. Also, I don't like a pointy dick. I don't like triangle no. tip. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like when it gets conical. No. That's a... That's... I think I can deal with any any shape size besides that. Like a conical dick is not going to work for me, babes. Um, for me, I, everyone <laughs> says like the perfect dick is eight inches, but I'm going to up no, the wager 10. to nine inches. Yeah, nine. Yeah, I'm upping the wager to nine inches. I feel like 10 inches, like 10 inches is like bleeding, like you're distressed. Like you feel like you've distressed. been stressed. I feel like you've been punched in the gut from inside of your stomach. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm like, not like getting like, out the ruler for these guys either. No, so I'm just, exactly. I'm just eyeing it. And I'm like, that looks, that looks like nine inches to me. Like, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, well, you know how I do. <laughs> um, how do you want to die? I either want to die soon or <laughs> I want to live to be like 105. But how, how, like if, if they're in your dream scenario 
of like if you were in a cinema and you were like for example if you were like an actress and like the what, what how do you want to go out whenever i'm on a plane and it starts to get a little bumpy or turbulent i'm i always sort of have this thought of like you know what i'm okay with this like if i die right now this would be this wouldn't be the worst way you know what i mean like Dying in a glamorous plane crash would be like it's like it's just the right amount of tragedy that people are like taken too soon. I want to die in a very big glamorous way. Yeah, like, I want to get like shot in the heart or something by oh like a God. lover. You know what I mean? Like I want to be like sh- like literally like n- don't fuck up my face. But like if I yeah. could just die, open and, casket. Yeah, exactly. I mean like not open casket. Like I want a Viking funeral. Like I want to be like put on the boat with like the coins in my on like because you know oh my, I'm, my my Irish Norwegian roots are sort of like giving me this sort of like Viking vibe where I want like a, a good Viking funeral. Which Devil Wears Prada character are you? I am definitely Emily. <laughs> Some hideous skirt convention you have to go to. Um, I see that for you. Definitely, Emily. You eat carbs. I'm her for sure. I'm one stomach flew away from my gone weight. I'm on this new diet where I don't eat anything at all. When I feel like I'm going to faint, I get a cube of cheese. Yeah, Emily Blunt, I really see that for you. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm giving. I feel like I'm giving Andy Sachs looks, but like yeah. personality wise, I'm like a Miranda Priestly. Down. Um. Your favorite kink and your least favorite kink. Oh my god, this is so uh, vulnerable. My least favorite kink, I don't like poop. <laughs> oh no, that's babies, like, the baby, the diaper stuff. Uh, yeah, that's when guys like gross. to be diapered, Ew. or like baby talk, like did you like that no. sort of like poop, no, 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 no. that kind of shit? Absolutely not. My most favorite kink, um, I have like a bit of an underwear fetish, um, like a man in panties. Yeah, I can get into that. Yeah, I'm into lots of things. She's into lots of things. I'm here for it. I know. I don't want to give away all my secrets, God. Unless, I mean, who knows? This is the place to give away all your secrets, honey. I gotta save some for the next podcast. True. (laughs) Um, worst celeb encounter. Like, what's a celebrity oh that you've met God. who you like? No, I cannot. Yes, you can. Come I'll on. say I won't say the name. But I'll say where it was and what it. Yeah, was Yeah, you don't don't say the name, but give us enough that we can sort of like draw conclusions about who it possibly could be. Um. Okay, I was at the Met Gala, and Love. this person was. We were eating dinner. Yeah. And they were just being so obnoxious like annoying as fuck like literally i think everyone at the table was like is this is she for real like it's like you're like we were, we were all looking at her like she was a fucking freak like what are you doing she was just like making it all about her outfit like how oh my god you guys i'm so crazy like look at me like how am i gonna sit down in this like i need a special like just like going doing the most like doing the most mm-hmm. and it's a room full of like the most prestigious people like in, Beyonce is there. Like, sweetie, we're in a room full of like the most iconic people in the world. Yeah. Like, in our industry. Like we're at the Olympics of Was this person iconic though, is the question. Like this person To some people, yes. To some people. To some people, this person is like I'm, d- I'm dying to know who it was. You're gonna have to tell me later. Can I'll you- tell you later. No, yeah. I could never feel like I would I was gonna mouth it to you, but I don't want any I don't want any bad blood with anyone. I don't want any hate. There's no this we're not being shady, just fierce. But this person was just going above and beyond and I'm and it read as like almost like insecure because we were in such the room was filled with like, yeah, I mean, John Galliano, Jonathan Versace, Bella Hadid, Gwen Stefani. I mean, everyone, everyone who's at the, the camp Met Gala yeah. is in this room. And this person is just like giving shows. And I'm can like, you, can you, like, can you describe down. this person in like three words that like maybe would give us hints on to who it is, but not revealing their <sighs> okay. identity? Um, American. Okay. Like cheesy, cheesy American and like mainstream. And mainstream. Yeah. And then we're sitting at the same table as you. So everybody go to the internet and um, do your no, research to do find not. out they, who it they, is. I didn't say they were sitting at the same table as me. Yes, you did. You said that they were sitting at the same table. But honestly, I'm so fucking here for the drama. Uh, no, I don't want any drama. I love everyone. Love and light. 
what movie <laughs> takes um you out of a depression? Like, what movie do you watch when you're feeling really sad and, like, you just, like, don't want to be sad anymore? Mm, I don't know. I really love putting on Sex in the City. It's not a movie. Yeah. Like, the series. Yeah. Just... It just is comforting. Great answer. It's just so comforting. And I, I know the storyline already, but like, it's just so relatable. And they have, those episodes have so much wa- like rewatchability. Like you just see you notice things, the, the outfits and the looks and the cinematography and then the storylines and just like, you, you start thinking about the human experience. Yeah. And like, it's just such an honest portrayal of the human experience, I think, of like, Life and love and relationships and friendships and everything. And there's always a like, drama in it and they always get past it. So it's sort of like a good sort it's of like, like on to the next. Yeah, yeah. On to the next. Like I like it. There's like a new challenge in every single episode. A- every episode is like, yeah, they're I, working through some bullshit they have to deal with. And yeah. they're like dealing with it in a very honest and real way. That's like, it's not like fake. Like it's not like some ridiculous show where they're like, Oh, and then he came in on a horse and did it. Like, it's like, this is like the real scenario of what might happen. Yeah, definitely. So, I, I, w- I think that's a great answer. It's comforting. One person I wish I could look like. I actually like the way I look already, I think. But like in your, in your dreams of like, oh my God, I wish I could like be this person. In the face, there's definitely been male models that I'm like, oh my God, he's gorgeous. I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard. Who I could look like? Okay, well, maybe like. I mean, I love Yasmin Geary. Ger- 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 like the '90s the supermodel. 90s yeah, I love the way she looks. She's gorgeous. But like, I kind of do look like her. I think. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving moving along. Okay, which which person that you idolize do you wish you could be? A dead or alive? Do like it I doesn't wish? it doesn't have to be someone who's living right now. I don't know. That answer would change so much. Like right now, like I yeah, said, like, what about right now? Into my like masculinity vibes. Um so I'm kind of like, I don't know, I just watched the Peter Berlin documentary and it yeah. was kind of a horrible documentary, but I really loved not necessarily the way he looked, but just what he was doing and how like Who is that, by the way? I have like no idea who he, Peter Berlin is. Um basically is like a Tom of Finland caricature. Like he oh, was okay. just like super butch. Like he was just like hyper, hyper, hyper butch. He wore like leather chaps everywhere and like was always shirtless and just like da- a daddy, like a leather daddy, a leather daddy. But he was like, he would just like walk the streets in San Francisco and he just like took photos of himself. Like he was basically a self, a self portrait. He's basically doing Instagram before Instagram and was just being like a thoughty person, uh, just yeah. taking self portraits and like leather. But he was just like, so overtly sexual and so overtly sexualized and so overtly like gay and queer and visible and like hyper masculine yeah to a point where it was like comedic he was so masculine like performing um so i sort of like i don't know i don't know yeah i don't want to look like him but i i'm leaning into that like performative masculinity performative masculinity it's an all masculinity performative anyways last last question um what do you want – how do you want to be remembered? Like, what do you want your legacy to be? Like, what, whatever, like, people – whatever you leave behind on Earth, what do you want that message to be? How would you like to be remembered? On your tombstone, Violet Tchotchke was. I just want to be remembered as great. I don't know. I just want to be – first of all, I want my story to continue from where I'm at right now. Like, I think one of my biggest fears is, like, I've – already peaked or something and like that's definitely my my biggest fear is like having already peaked and like not having more to do or more to say or more to be yeah um so i don't know what it will turn into or what it will look like but i just want it to be respected i want what i leave behind to be respected i want to inspire people and i want to uh, be one of the, like I want someone to look up to me in the future. And it's crazy to think that we have so much content, like my idols, like, you know, the people that I look up to in the forties, fifties or whatever, like my drag idols, there just isn't that much information on them. Like there's just not that many photos. There's not that many, like, there's a lot of information about you. There's a whole damn YouTube channel. I know there's just so much stuff. And I'm, I just always picture like some little gay boy in like, what, I don't know, like the year 3000, like, looking at this 
body of media, just like photos and videos and sound bites and images and like just this digital like blueprint of everything yeah. I've ever done. And just trying to think about like what that looks like. Well, Violet. Very weird, but whatever. I I idolize you. I think you're amazing. I think you're incredible. And thank you so much for being guest number one on the Unholy and Curious podcast. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful that we're friends. I'm grateful that you exist. Thank fucking God people like you exist. The world would be such a boring ass place if people like Violet Tchotchke and were not likewise existing. likewise to you I thank you so much for having me I'm so glad I could pop your cherry I feel like you popped my podcast cherry I popped your podcast cherry I think we I mean I feel good we talked about so many good things we did talk about a bunch we of like things. really killed it thank I, you for having me of course I love you boo. I love you too I don't know what my sign off is gonna be but like I need to think of a good sign off anyways Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Me and Violet, thank you for your attention if you were able to make it through all this time. And until the next episode, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.